pro tips for road. Paul Childerly is calling bucks and has everything crawling out of the woodwork. Big Bad Ben. We chat to multi-world clay shooting champion Ben Husthwaite about his career, the controversy and the coaching by kicking off our new Game Ball sponsored series, Smoking Targets. Bad boy of shooting? It's a title I can live with. The Spartan Bipod Competition. 500 of you entered. There can be only two. We draw the winners. We have news. We have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Secret weapon. <laughs> What's that, Piggy? <laughs> David had white trainers on earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Picked a nice, still, warm, humid, perfect conditions. <laughs> and now, unfortunately, we've got a bit of a windy evening. Um, but you know, if it's on and uh, you're getting a bit of a, a lull behind a bit of wood um, where there's not a lot of gust or wind, you know, you've got a good chance. Yeah, so we thought we'd give it, give it a go. And failing tonight, we might try tomorrow morning because I know tomorrow morning's going to be still. So fingers crossed for tonight. Talking along here, there's a, there's a young four point, just a four point buck uh, laid down 20, 25 yards back in the cover here in the bracken. He's laid down there resting, obviously, the wind's pushed him down. Didn't get clear enough shots, so I give him a couple of squeaks to get him to stand up. We're probably a little bit close. It's good, good to see a buck, get a bit of action, get a bit of, get a bit of movement. I thought he'd stand when he, before he got to the thick cover, but he didn't want to know, so it's good. We'll move on to the next. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. See him? Do you know what, right? I'll be honest with you. I sort of knew you couldn't see it, but I knew it was my only opportunity. <laughs> when it's a broadside and the excitement's on, he came, we saw, oh, I didn't. and David, big fat, he must be the white trainers, it's bleached his eyes and made him blind. But like I say, he gave me the shot opportunity um, and, ah, you know, perfect shot, I'll say, <sighs> on a perfect row rut cool in windy conditions in the afternoon which is absolutely perfect i'm actually uh, i'm actually over the moon shame about that but that's that's hunting i can't get it perfect for the cameraman every time <laughs> come on let's go and have a look at him 
really good condition in his coat, really strong neck, a few marks up through here. I feel him now, you can actually feel quite a few slight marks where he's been maybe possibly fighting. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's not in the top condition. You see, see his heel up, you see his spine, you know, up through the middle there. So he's he been working hard, this boy has. Um, again, see his hips, hips coming through here. He's not in, he's not in bad condition. He's just he's just been working hard. He's a fit fit chap. Or was. I think this year was his last rutting year. He passed on a few genes, but he won't, won't be making it to next year. But that's the whole point of management. You take out the old, the the poorer, reduce the numbers, and you get a healthy, thriving stock. Oh, perfect. The kit we got on tonight is obviously the Shooter King clothing. <laughs> clothing. Um, it's actually a quite a cold night, um, and I suffer with a cold a little bit, so I've actually got them. Wow! Hey, it's a pig. Oh, you're yeah, the pig, isn't it? <laughs> quiet, poor, poor, poor keeper, quiet. Um, so, <laughs> oh, that in there, <laughs> Cut. Take three. <laughs> yeah, so with the Hubertus Call, cool, uh, comes with a uh, smooth uh, mouthpiece. Uh, this is an any blow. Um, so obviously a butt coming at you or, or in, the, in the haste of excitement, you, it just pops straight out of your mouth. It does. No matter how you, it just pops out, out. So I always cut a couple of little notches uh, in there, get the teeth in there, and then... And if it comes, you can just keep it in there. Otherwise, the other way around, you're like... And away it goes. So, yeah, it's a little tip. So you were playing two tunes <laughs> at some point in the evening. Explain that for me, Paul. Uh, the Pied Piper. Yeah, basically the whole point of these calls is you're trying to mimic, imitate another deer. She was alerted with a loud blast of the patello when she was further away. And then we put her to the squeak. So it's more like a fawn squeaking and she, you know, stamping her foot and really aggressive trying to see if the fawn was okay. Um, you always got to watch the animals and watch the reaction of the animal. No good just blasting away and hope for the best. But unfortunately, we're about to try him on a muntjac, I think. We've run out. Percy, be quiet. He gets deflated. <laughs> that's enough. That's the, that's that's the yeah, noise. That's, well, that's, that's for muntjac. We'll save it for muntjac. We'll try it for muntjac. Yeah. Yeah, so good that's night, Percy. <laughs> calling, everybody's got their own art of calling, you know, my methods might not be suitable for other people. Um, you tweak them each time you go out, you try something new, using the little Hubertus call to call the fox. Like I say, it wasn't the best of evenings, but it's been, for weather-wise, but it's been an absolute thumbs up for me. I really, thoroughly enjoyed it, and it's simply my bit of heaven. Yeah, it just makes the hard weeks worth it. Well done, Paul, and shame on you, David. Apparently, we have to feel sorry for David because the vaccinations are messing with his mind. Vaccinations, yes, he's off to South America with Tim Pillbeam to film some more rucksack and rifle. Terribly infectious, those high-volume doves, apparently, with any luck. And here he is, the drugged-up David, on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Grouse moors protect rare birds. 
While BBC presenter Chris Packham calls grouse shooting moorland vandalism, a study by Newcastle and Durham universities on 18 moorland estates across England and Scotland between April and June this year found 76 bird species on the grouse moors, including 43 endangered ones. They found equal numbers of birds of prey and owls where gamekeepers were most active, compared with least active. And they found that skylarks are 32% more prolific with intensive gamekeeper protection. Sir Ian Botham has hit out at the BBC's hunting agenda. The former cricketer clashed with BBC Radio 5 live presenter Rachel Burden over a plan he is promoting to give away pheasant ready meals to the homeless. There is no just, with hang on, can, I, can I just finish, Mr. Botham? I'm really sorry, because then and otherwise people don't know what we're talking about. Otherwise no, people would. Wrong. You are wrong. There's nothing to do with grouse. Okay, we're this talking about pheasant and partridge, pheasant casserole and partridge curry, which we are giving. The food donation plan is run by the Country Food Trust. A viewer has caused an extraordinary image of a hare suckling a leveret. John Bailey from Bailey Shooting and Country Wear was trialling a night vision scope from NV UK when he captured the images and makes the point that the rifle was unloaded and the bolt open. The National Gamekeepers Organisation has reported a good response to its stand at Country File Live. They tell us they had thousands of visitors pass through and even got a vegetarian to try venison. Escaped Harris Hawks are attacking joggers. That's the claim by Andy Clewellyn from Derbyshire, who shows tramline gouges in his head. He believes were made by a Harris Hawk, which circled above him and then attacked. According to the British Trust for Ornithology, 59 sightings of the Harris Hawk have been reported with nesting sites in Derbyshire, Kent and Northern England. Thanks to viewer Bram van der Berg for sending in the story. Staff at Bristol Water in Somerset have caught an alligator. The baby reptile was spotted sunbathing next to Chew Lake. They say they have no idea where the animal came from and have passed it on to an animal welfare charity. And finally, while Donald Trump has been off playing golf for his summer holiday, the other leader of the other half of the free world, Vladimir Putin, has been hunting in Siberia. The Russian president posed topless for photographers after catching a perch in the Tuva region. He was joined on his holiday by the topless defence minister, Sergei Shoigu. When they wear clothes, they both favour American brands. Putin in Sitka gear, which is based in Montana, and Shoigu in a cryptac jacket from Wisconsin. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, over the past few weeks, more than 500 of you have entered our competition to win one of two Spartan bipods. And in my slightly techie way, I've entered all your names into a spreadsheet just there. So let's scroll up and choose winner number one. Winner number one is... Winner number one is Chris Conlin. Chris Conlin who entered on YouTube with the correct answer, which is Sparta. Winner number two, winner number two coming up now, and it is, winner number two is Peter Zwartz. Peter Zwartz, who said Spartan, will we'll accept Spartan, Sparta, anything like that, also entered on YouTube. Peter, Chris will contact you about sending you your Spartan bipods. Next up, a double dose of Ben Husthwaite. We've been off dissecting targets with him at Buckinghamshire Clayground, E.J. Churchill. And first up, we have How Do You Approach a Rabbit? Nice and relaxed on your hands. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Up. Gently, gently. A lot better. Just really back that hand speed down, yeah? Even if we're not on camera, let's back the hand speed down. Let's try and take good shots. You enjoy coaching? I love it, yeah. Yeah, I get more enjoyment out of coaching than shooting. The most enjoyment comes from winning, obviously, but coaching, just watching, you know, when I first met Nikki, she was shooting a 28 inch, another make of gun, which I'm not going to mention. And not shooting it very well, were you? You know, and then we, no, it wasn't okay. It wasn't okay. It really wasn't okay. And then we changed to uh, 
the Krieg off here and then you won the German Championship by 25 targets. <laughs> a full 25. And then we went to uh, Holland and we shot the Dutch Championship where the, most of the GB team were there, the French team was there, the Italian team was there. You got a bronze medal. Mm -hmm. And we went back last year and me and Frank was trying to keep her eyes on the scoreboard and not let Nikki sort of know where she was coming. And she needed to shoot a big 23 on a hard layout to win her first major title. And uh, she went out and shot 23 and won the gold medal. So. You know, I find that as rewarding as she does on the podium. You know, what the gratification that I get from seeing her up there performing like that with all my students is as good as shooting herself. The first time we're going to come to here is the right to left rabbit. We've just seen Nikki shoot it. And there's a lot of common faults that you will find with a target like this. You know, a rabbit has a background to it, so it's going to appear quicker than it actually is. It's also, because it's in contact with the floor, it's going to slow down quicker than a normal standard. We've also got to look for variables in its flight path. So, you know, there's a couple of bumps out here where that rabbit could possibly jump. So I don't want to commit to the shot by then. So I've picked this nice flat area as my kill point. My viewpoint is right back here. I'm going to sort of get my hands on that clay at the halfway point. Then I'm going to try and match its speed and slow down at the relative speed that it is before at the last minute applying my lead. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Paul! Paul! As the gun comes from the hole point, my hands just start to move slowly as that rabbit appears on my viewpoint. And on the shot cam, you'll see it perfectly that the barrel matches the bird here. And from there, it just stays with the clay, learning its speed, learning where it's going. And when it enters my kill zone, you'll just see my body turn and pull away to my lead. One of those on the shot cam you'll see I shot later because right in the middle here, it took a big jump, which sends me off sync. I have to let it come back down to the ground, match up with him again before I take that shot a little later. Any kind of rabbit, anything like this, it's all down to your hand speed, letting your eyes work first, hands matching the speed before we enter the kill zone and just pull away to that predetermined lead. What about position of hands on stock? Is it different to a, a, a bird? I don't, I, don't, I don't move my hands, you know. I like to think that I've got enough core strength and, and also discipline to let my hands match the speed, you know. If they throw a 70-yard bird, I can move from here. If they throw a 10-yard bird, you just put the brakes on, turning from the middle here, which is going to allow me to match any target speed. I'm not one for, for shuffling around. As you can possibly see here, my thumb never moves. It's worn the blue in a way because that always sits in the same place, which gives me that nice reference point that I'm, that, you know, that I'm never, I'm going to be consistent in everything that I do. And it's consistency is key, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, the shooters just got better and better now. You know, I'm working very hard with Nikki and Frank here to get them consistent. When you can get to that 80% level, you've pretty much mastered the fundamentals. Now it's all about the next level and not making those little mistakes, you know, holding back too far on here and making a too fast a move. You hold further back, the gun moves quicker. So it is just fine tuning and really, really being consistent. And you know, little things like this just tell me that I'm consistent in everything that I do with the gun. That leads me down to fundamental technique and, and lead with what shooting's about. Oh, and starting on something like a rabbit, is it just trigger time, consistency again? No, for me, shooting's all about spaces, you know? You're either gonna shoot straight at something or you're gonna shoot 15, 20 foot in front of something. You know, that space has to be the same four times at English Sporting. So if you're gonna shoot off timing and you're gonna match the speed and just pull away and shoot, yeah, it's gonna work one day, it's not gonna work the next. I'm all about specific spaces and letting visually be strong that I can see the correlation between the clay and the barrel and know that, you know, that, that specific space looks like this and I'm gonna do that three more times. If I miss it, I've now got a starting point because this didn't work and I've got two choices. We either go bigger or we go smaller and I believe that's why I've been as successful as I am because I, make, I see, I see with, with my eyes, not just timing. It's, it's so important to do the same thing over and over again. You know, an easy reference point, you pin the tail on the donkey. If you've got a blindfold on, you're not very good. Take your blindfold off, you're probably going to win. And that's what I'm doing here. I want to shoot with the blindfold off and I want to see specific spaces. We did a film recently with a guy who said anyone that closes one eye is basically guessing. I mean, would you concur? Is that something, do you ever teach someone to close an eye? I don't know who that guy was, but he probably wants to go back and get a bit more education in shooting because if you've got a left dominant eye, you've got to close it down if you're right-handed. I've got very successful lady shooters, Nikki. Nikki's got a patch on her eye. Her left eye's taken out the equation. She's already, you know, seventh in Europe and winning major World Cup events. So I don't believe that's true.
Thank you, Ben, to his student Nicky, to EJ Churchill and to Game Boar for making the whole thing happen. Now, while we had Ben, David sat him down and asked him questions about why he is the bad boy of British shooting. I'm going to wade right in, really, because you are the bad boy of, of shooting. Everyone needs a bad boy. It uh, just happens to be you. Do, you. do you feel you deserve it? Uh, deserve it or not, it doesn't bother me. You know, I've probably got more manners, etiquette and experience than all the people that call me the bad boy of shooting. They just don't get to see it. Have I done bad things? Of course I have. I'm a rugby player. You can do bad things. You can do crazy things. You spend more time naked than you do with clothes on. But, you know, bad boy of shooting? That's a title I can live with. Some people suggest you will bend the rules, maybe even cheat. What about that? It's a question I love, you know. Cheat. If they want to blame me for their own indiscretions, then I'm fine with that. You know, if they need to throw the limelight onto me to cover up what they've done, I can live with it. If you cheat, you get caught, you get banned. That's simple. If I know the rules better than somebody else, and like, like I say, the biggest rumour is what happened at the World Championships, there was a simultaneous pair, Shondell and a rabbit. I took the Shondell on, I missed it. I came down for the rabbit. If I kill the rabbit, it's lost kill, I shoot 95. There's already a 96 on the scoreboard. I miss the Shondell, I come down, I don't shoot the rabbit, the rabbit breaks on the floor. It's a simultaneous pair, rule state, reshoot the pair. Pair again, kill, kill, 96, tie for the gold. You tell me if that's cheating or being smart. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Is it cheating? I don't see it as cheating. I don't see it as manipulating the rules. I don't see it as bending the rules. It's a rule. That's it. I didn't write them. I played by them. If you know them, you're in a better situation than the guy that doesn't. What about intimidation of referees, something like that? I love referees. You know, I'm the first to congratulate a referee when he makes a good decision. If I try to intimidate you, as a referee, the first thing you're going to do is go back to the ground organiser and say is try to intimidate me. That has never happened. That has never, ever happened. I have a lot of banter with referees. If people misinterpret that, that's their problem. Any, the questions that you're asking me, any of your viewers ever see me on a shooting ground, they are more than welcome to come and ask me the same question. Give me two great things about shooting and two bad things about shooting. One of the great things about shooting is obviously me. That can't be argued. I'm probably the best thing in the sport. Um, the second great thing would be <laughs> the people in the sport. So the worst things would be the people in the sport. And, you know, we're a small, small group of people. You know, a, I'm a big fish in a small pond. And if we keep fighting from within, the next level of competitors aren't going to have a sport to compete in. I play rugby at a good level and you put the opposite number against me for 80 minutes and I'm going to go to war with him. You know, if I'm going to hell, I'm taking him with me. When that final whistle goes, me and him have a hug, we have a beer and we shake hands and we say, see you in 14 weeks when we get to do this again. In shooting, you go to war for 100 birds and then you go to war for a week about the 100 birds you've shot. You know, social media. I don't watch DCNs anymore, I just read social media. When you look back in sort of, I don't know, 20 years time... You think I'm going to live that long? <laughs> <laughs> 10 years time. Have I made mistakes in the sport? Yes. Have I been guilty of the backbiting and the immature posts on Facebook? Yes. Have my sponsors pulled me up on them? Yes. Do I learn from your mistakes? Not always. You do it again because the jealousy and the idiotness take over. So in the next 10 years in the sport, I'm never going to change who I am. I'm, that's never going to happen. I'm Ben Hustway. I'm a rugby player. I'm a mum and dad's son. And I'm a shooter second. And I'm going to be who I'm going to be. You'll either like me or you won't. But I would like to change my stamp on the sport over the next 10 years. I want to be the one that leads the social media post now and be positive, not negative. I don't want to slag off any more of my competitors 
live on social media and things like that. So the stat, I think I hopefully I'll be left with two legacies. Ben, that was the bad boy of shooting, and then Ben, that still is the bad boy of shooting, but's a lot smarter than his competitors and is willing to take the sport forward. Do you think because of the rugby side of it as well, your mental strength is, is probably stronger than anyone else? You won't beat me mentally. You won't beat me mentally at all. And shooting, like I say, it doesn't mean it's not everything to me. So, you know, if I don't win tomorrow, it, you know, the world still spins and I'm still going to rugby train Tuesday, Thursday and try and go to war with somebody on Saturday. So, you never try and play mental games as a rugby player. That's just daft. You know, many have tried and they'll always, they'll always fail. You've been loyal to, to Kriegoff and you've been loyal to, to Game Ball. I mean, why, why is that? They're the best in the sport, but also, and I've said this a thousand times, do Game Ball make the best cartridge in the world? I, agree, I think so. But you asked me by how much? It's a small margin. But the office staff, the support, and their presence at events is 80% better than anybody else. And that's the important part. They're both similar companies and they interact well with each other. So you've got product first, but also the support network is more important than anything. Okay, and achievements, what would you like to achieve in the next five years if you're not going to live till? Staying alive. Still play rugby, staying alive, and trying to keep looking as good as Rob Fennick Holy over here. Holy <laughs> Holy <laughs> um, you know, the goal is to be world champion. That's always going to be the goal, you know. That's always going to be the driving force, is, is to stand at the top of that podium and say you're the best in the world. Um, final question, who's the best looking shot in uh, clay sports in this country? Rob Fennick doesn't compete anymore, otherwise it could, it could become a close second. But, um, you know, the World Championships is usually won by a clay or two, but the, when it comes to persona, personality, all-round banter and good looks, then there's only one winner, I don't even have to mention it. Well, there you are, Ben defending his position and that controversial decision in the 2015 World Championship. Now from High Wycombe to the rest of the world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Here is Hunter Fieber's roundup of the 2017 Row Rut in Germany. Deer stalking in what translates from Germany as leaf time is, as he says, something very special. The ever impressive Marius from Wild Boar Fanatic is back with a crow hunting film. They're calling them in, which is illegal in the UK but clearly effective. Ulrich Orskarf is back on fine, weepy form. Close encounter bow hunting wild mountain boars in Australia. Nick Morton from Ozcut Broad. Head takes Ulrich and his curly ninja friend out of the pigs. It's a bit foggy, but here is a taster of quail shooting over Weimaraners in Croatia by Servile Channel. Some nice dog work and good shooting. More wing shooting in Argentina, where Skip Knowles and Ramsey Russell join Terry Denman and the Mojo crew for some of the amazing shooting that's available there. It is winter in Argentina and it is winter here as Felu takes us to the Vosges Mountains in the December snow. He is out in the great cold after wild boar red and roe deer with his Zara 404. In German and and English Dreis Pross is out in northern Sweden after elk. He is filming this for the Jagd Leben online German hunting platform. And finally, SRS Power has either gone mad or sucked up an entire dictionary of cliches, or he is making a valid point about hunting being a spiritual activity. You be the judge. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click the like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain trying to beat the rain here. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. Goodbye.